I'm saying? There's a lot to talk Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> 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 All right. <coughs> Welcome. Oh, well, thank to you. To another <coughs> edition of High Fidelity. <coughs> Shavo, System of Down. We're here to talk records. And smoke a little. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> I have two storage rooms full of it. F- full, full, full. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Mail crates, fucking. Yeah. And I have them in, like, I have my rock, my metal, the hip hop, my breaks. Mine was, like, few and far, the spinning, you know? Yeah. So it was, like, in the beginning when I got into it, um, I'd lo- I had only, like, t- like, 10 records or something. So I enjoyed listening to the records, and I would yeah. put them on cassette tape, and I'd listen to them in my car That's as dope. I drove, so I can get the breaks and know when the like the, the eighth is, and when it comes in, and when the build up ends. And so you know, so when I'm spinning, I know exactly what the record is because these are like 16 minute records, you know, like hell 10 minute yeah, records. So hell yeah. you gotta know all the cuts and where it goes, and you know. And like I bought records of my entire life as a kid. Like my one of the biggest rewards for me is like if I did. If I did, you know, yard work or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, if you want, take you go to the record store, record store and go buy your shit. Uh, but when I started really like buying records and started really appreciating what a 12 inch was, mm. you know what I mean? And I was like, what do you mean? Why is there only one song compared yeah. to the rest? Then you see how much fuller the song Ooh. sounds because they got all those extra, you know. Oh man, you grooves, just see, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just a thicker groove. And, and then I learned that, you know, how the, it, it, things really have, if they're pressed on 45 on the 12 yeah, inch, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it's just maximum and then, like, sound. the thickness sometimes mattered. Mm-hmm. And like, you're like, oh, this is a heavy one. It wouldn't have been. And like, you couldn't spin it well. Like there's like you couldn't. The way, yeah, the traction, records. man. Yeah, it's so heavy on the it, traction, man. Hell yeah. Do you remember? Is there a first record as a kid? Song from Armenia, and I grew up. I was there from birth to like four and a half, five years old. Okay. So I have little memories of things. Okay. And those records came with us. Actually, we actually got to bring some of it back. Wow. Or over. And my mom, she was a music. She, she loved music, and so I have like Russian Prince of the Beatles, like Abbey Road record. Oh shit. Like with Russian writing on it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So uh, that, and then there was Abba. And then there was this uh, German group called Boney M. Oh, I've heard that of That was yeah. dope. Rasputin and shit. Uh, and then there was this African dude, uh, Afric Simon. Got to look into that, dude. Okay. Got some crazy scatting while he was like going off with this like tribal stuff. It was mm-hmm. really cool. So it got me. When I came to America, I grew up in Hollywood. My dad was driving a lunch truck. Mm. And one of his spots was a studio. And... Um, I guess Kiss was mixing a record there. This is no. how I this is how I got to no Kiss. Shit. Yeah, yeah. So and I also like saw Kiss on Solid Gold and shit. So it was like this thing where Whoa. I was like, wow, you can wear makeup and like perform and like do that. And it's like it, it was something crazy. I was like, wow, that's crazy. And I didn't yeah. say I want to do that, but I said, that's nuts. Like that's I love that. I, be, I became a fan of that. Oh yeah. Of, of like performance, you know. So he brought home the Creatures of the Night record. Yeah. Yeah. The, the old cover with the makeup and shit. And with the eyes glowing and Eric Carr. Yeah. Um, Eric Carr. R.I.P. Eric Carr. And it was Ace Fraley on it. You know? Still, yeah. Still, still he was still old, in the band. Technically, yeah, he technically, did. The, he was there. Yeah. He was there. So um, <laughs> that record got listened to so many fucking times where it's like, I, and then I used to also read the, the, the lyrics, liner notes. the liner notes. I would, I would like fold it. So there's all these, I still have like, creases all over it. You know, it looks like a wrinkle, but I kept it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then, so the first record I ever bought, though, I bought two records. My first, like, purchase-wise. Okay. My, it was like I had had a birthday or something, and I had used that money, and I went to um, the warehouse. Or was it Music Plus? I think it was Music Plus on oh, Vine wow. or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vine and, like, Sunset, Lord, you know? And uh, I bought Lick It Up. <laughs> yeah, and I bought um, "Mental Health" from Quiet Right. Yeah, so that was my two, first two, records. two killer yeah, records. That was my first two. I just like I, I remember buying them. I, I remember re- walking through, like getting them, not and scanned, but like getting put in. You know, the lick it up record scene, like them Their with faces, that, the with tongue. That, I was like, ah, what is that? The makeup, know? like yeah. it was. Just, it was like, ooh, <laughs> it was like, oh, I don't know if I want to look. Back but, on, put it back on. Yeah, but, <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm look. But that record had some that had some shit on there. Oh, like dude. there was a song called Exciter that Exciter. was heavy, yeah, heavy as fucking shit. Yeah, dude. Well, that heavy, dude. It's like Kiss, but it's heavy. Yeah, People man. Didn't listen to those songs though. They were all about. It all those breaking was like one of the first rap rock shits out there. You know, oh, they're God. rapping on that record. It's '83. You know, <laughs> yeah. so it's like I, I know the whole rhyme.
mine by heart. Do you? St- it's still embedded in my. I haven't done it in a while, but I remember it. All right, yeah. I'm gonna have to call you on maybe that one, one day. day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> this is the next episode. The next yeah. chill to yeah. the next episode. That's right. What about when did hip hop? Did hip hop? What was the first hip hop? I think it was Run DMC and Eric B. And Rock M. Yeah, that Word. got to me. Hell yeah. Uh, Run DMC did a lot because they were also on MTV at the time. and Not MTV, but they were on, they, they had videos. Yeah. So like they had that Christmas thing. So as, as a kid, that's how, that's, that brings you into music, you know? Yeah. So I, that got me into it. And then I got into the Adidas, oh, Beastie Boys. I got the license to Ill record. The Gatefold? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. And another record I got in, the, in that era was when I started, that's when I started collecting. That was like, oh, fuck. Like you can yeah, keep man. these now, you know? And uh, I got the Molly Crew. Um, shout out the devil. What? What? Is shout out the devil. Yeah, the name of the, yeah, yeah. That was the name of the record. The second, yeah. yeah, second record. Second one, and then I went back and got the first one. But that was, and I didn't know you can open it up because I had left the. This is when I started collecting, oh, so I left the wrapper on, right? So I didn't yeah. know you could like open it and see pictures of them. And when I discovered that, that was like the a record like meant more to me, you know? Yeah, like man. One. I remember DJing like you know when I first started really like using a lot of you know records and and trying to keep the condition of them. To me, it was a game to see how long I could keep the plastic shrink on it. On until it blew until off it just by blew yeah, off yeah, in yeah. the crate. So I'd be like, you know, like three weeks in, I'd be like, oh, it's still intact. But then there'd be that one mishap of just like trying to put my record back in, mm-hmm. and then and it, it just came sh- off. It. And I'd be like, ah, it's, it's like such a thin, you know, it's like so easy. But it was such a game. It was mm-hmm. like I it was like this thing. I was like, if I can keep it looking like I just got pre getting sleeves, you know, pre getting yeah. sleeves. Yeah, we weren't getting now. The, everyone, everything has a sleeve that I want to keep. You know? No, and now it's like that's the thing. You can go to like shops now and get like packs of the. Oh, yeah, 100 sleeves in for like five bucks, you know? Yeah, but, it's crazy. But back then, we didn't know, hey, there were no oh, sleeves that no, were no, around. No, no, there weren't. So it was all you about... should have come up with that, bro. Oh, man, we got to go back and... That's one of those things, time machine shit. You got to go. go back in time. That's a rad record. The Cramps, the vocalist, developed a new style of vocals um, where he had like his own vibrato. No way. He would go out like this and then that, he would do that shit. And then like b- bands like Beastie Twos and shit came out and like had that vibe kind of. No like, well, you should hear it and then okay. tell me what you think. I'm That's, only familiar with a couple yeah. of songs. Yeah, it's really like, cool. Really cool. Else, oh, this is a good record too, bro. Yeah, they were rad. Yeah. It's funny how we have all this. And now it's like rare shit. Yeah, yeah this is, <laughs> but it's the art in itself, right? Yeah. Like now these are all like art pieces. Jello. There's a story about Jello. So I'm a big, huge fan. We all are, of course, DK fans. Right. And I guess when he heard our band the first time, he thought we were ripping them off and he hated us. He still hates us. No I remember, way. Yeah. He, he doesn't like, so I was like, oh, that sucks because we really are not because Serge didn't know who the hell Dead Kennedys were and that's just his voice. But we did, though, as a band. The band members knew, you know, right, like me and right. Darren. And so, but that's the story. I hope he, uh, he, he sees this and says, I'm a big fan, bro. I'm like, don't say that. That hurts my, that hurts my feelings. Did you ever get into the Jesus and Mary chain? Not much. I know the record. I don't know it well, but I never got into them. They were heavy, like in a like noise kind of way. I like way. their name, the Jesus and Mary yeah, chain. Such a great name. The song "I Hate Rock and Roll" mm-hmm. is it's, it's not on that record. It's on oh, the no, record. I want to listen to it now. That, now I'm gonna want to listen to all the records you're gonna tell me oh, like, yeah. to listen to. I'm gonna have to take notes. James Brown. Dude, I went through a James Brown crazy phase, like oh, where it was yeah. when I was hanging with RZA, and um, yeah, that was a long time, but somewhere in the middle, I got into that Foundations of Funk record. Have you heard that fucking yeah, record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After yeah. like track eight, where they're in the studio jamming, and he's just like telling voice cues, saying like, when I go three times, uh, uh, you're going to go bump, so they're going to go bump, he's going to go, uh, like, yeah. it's so, every one of his like sounds that he makes is an actual cue to hit the horns or to the bass and then he's like let me hear some bass he goes too much bass he goes this is a, you got a big horn or it's like like yeah. he just like tell he goes tyrone let me hear like let me hear that he's like no that's too much you know yeah and he, he would write it, it with his mouth yes he would be like all right now i want you to know do this and then they would do that and then you'd be like okay now the bass player would like go like this boom 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 Boom, 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 and then the guy would do it. He was, okay, okay, go. Yes. He'd go to the guitar and go like, and he would compose a fucking track. So I did that yes. once on stage with the guys from Chameleon Conductor. I was wasted. And nice. I got up there and I said, because they knew I was into it. So they they said, do you want to do that? I said, sure, oh, let's make a song up on stage at one of the little clubs in LA. 
And I got up there with a the drink and I, with the mic, I was like, all right, let's hear the drums. Let's go. And I just made it up at the moment and it went nice. well. And it just kind of happened. And I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> and I walked on stage. It was a moment, you know? <laughs> Hell yeah. It was really cool. See, that's the beauty of it. Like, just, you know, like, and also Prince adapted his style. We were looking at his cover earlier, but Prince adapted, like, the way he worked his band out. Like, was, he would always, like, he's, I've heard stories from Wendy and Lisa talking about, he would make them jam Body Heat by James Brown yeah. for, like, 30 minutes straight. That's the thing, because it goes into your head, yeah. and then something happens, and it, like, dude, when I listen to a lot of music, that's when I can write, like, flow, shit comes out of me. I don't have to write. I don't have to, like, I never write. I never say I'm writing something. It's just, just comes. if I'm inspired, I play something, and shit will come out, and then I'll be like, did you record that? Because <laughs> I'm not going to remember it again, you know? Yeah. So that's what it is, bro. That's what when you listen. So at that time, I was a big funk guy. I was big, like, just bass in it. Doom, 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 you know? And I'm, my bass playing got better just because of that. Because I just kind of focused on bass. Because I'm a metalhead. Like I said, my first records were metal. So I was always listening to guitar. And it took a while to actually listen to the bass and say, mm. oh, the bass is an actual instrument. It's not just accompanying another, you know? Right. Was bass the first uh, instrument you sought out to play? No, no, no. I played guitar since I was like 12 years old, 13 years old. I was playing guitar. Like my, I've been wanting an instrument forever. Since I, like from Armenia, I've been banging on drums. Not drums, like pants, pots and pants. And then when I was like, I'm not sure, 12, 13, 14, my grandma got me one. She kind of got me, she got me a Kramer. And that's yeah. all I did. I just jammed in my room, bro. Like didn't tell anyone. Because my parents didn't want me to have one. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, they were kind of like... Like, yeah, starving not. musician, you don't want him to be that, you know, it's, it's the old, old mentality. You know? Right, as you were collecting records, when did you start to want to learn, like, to DJ, to, like, to mm -hmm. learn to, like, do the, you know, to... I'll tell you. To blend two records together and just... I was, um, I was hanging with someone and they, they went to raves and I always heard about raves, this was in the 90s. And I'd never done, like, anything, you know, I'd never done any drugs or anything. I swear, I, I had maybe smoked weed at that time and had drink alcohol, you know? Right. And, um... So we went to a rave and I said, I'll do ecstasy and I'll try it out. And I was like 22 probably, so like 96, 95. I never listened to techno or electronic, but I love disco and shit, but I never like, right. I never really got into it, you know? Um, bro, I don't know when that shit hit and I, we were, it was an outdoor party. I'm sitting on the floor and I'm listening to it and I'm like, okay. And then they took me to the dance floor and they're like, feel it. And I'm like, I'm not a dancer, I don't dance. I'm like a rocker, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna I'm do this. Gonna, so yeah, I was like, gonna, like I'm gonna stand this here, guy, here. you know? And then all of a sudden, I'm this guy. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, fuck. And it was Carl Cox. Carl, yeah. Dude, oh, it was gee. Carl Cox. And I didn't know at the oh, time it gee. was until they told me afterwards. And he was doing four records. And I was like, what's happening? And I, the musician got out of me. And I was like, I started watching him. And with, you know, and he got me, dude. I fell into it. I was like, oh, shit, I wanna do this. He's controlling the fucking crowd. And at that yeah. time I was playing, I was like, I did that. Cause I was watching him with the four records back to Carl Cox. Carl and the Cox. fact that he had like two going and he was like dancing. And I'm like, wait, is that two? I'm not understanding what's happening in the track, but I'm trying to focus and dissect. And then when I got all these like mixtapes, I started buying mixtapes from like local DJs. Yeah. I started listening to that shit. Yeah. There was yeah. this guy who was like a trans DJ, but I dug him from LA, it was Christopher Lawrence. At yeah. the time, yeah, you know, like time. it wasn't like he was doing anything crazy, but that's when I learned how to listen to full tracks and like not cut too fast. Because there's also the whole cutting too fast part where, they where before so. the best part, you're like already going to the next yeah. track because I have so many tracks to play. I love the vibe of the audience and the band, you know? Yeah. So the DJs were doing that and I was like, dude, I want to do that. And so when I got home, I was still kind of thing and I called Darren and I was like, dude, I got into this new music. <laughs> dude, <laughs> I'm all telling them all about shit. it. Yeah. One of my favorite producers, Armand Van Helden. Oh, did rap, yeah. Yeah, he was, the, he, one of the, the two reasons I mainly loved him is that uh, he incorporated a lot of hip hop sounds into mm -hmm. house making, yeah. but it still was house. It had the house feel. It mm -hmm. came from like the real place. And then also was that he, the mo the longer you played his song, the the more and some people might say, oh, the repetition of it, but the stronger the groove got. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what was rad about some of the there house. There was a music. vibe. Yeah. There was a vibe. House had that. I, I I never liked the like the cheesy house. Yeah. But I dug that groove that was always under it. I that's something. And it's always you know kind of bomb. He's still around. I think Jeff Mills. Yeah. Purpose maker. Yep. I if there was a purpose maker drop, and I was getting it. I have everyone. I can do a whole Jeff Mills set for you. Right. You know what I mean? That's how I am with Armand. Yeah, Armand. I can do a whole yeah, Armand. That's great. Band also, there was um, Olaf Bosowski. Yep. And if you're, he was more like, what was it? French House, I think. Yep. Right? It was like, cool Absolutely. shit. Yeah, he had some shit. 
grooves, bro. Like disco shit with congas and the French man, the French house. Like that's uh, the roulette label was. Really yeah, that good. was uh, the Dap Punk dudes. Was uh, it? Yeah. Was that before the? the or, that was right around the same time because Dap Punk, I think, hit in like '96. Okay, so it was the same time. '97, maybe. Their whole scene, man. I, like I remember going out in some clubs in Paris, and that's all you know. Just I love that whole thing. Bro. And that just Dap sounded Punk, so yeah. just like, oh, I need Dap to be Punk here. Got famous, big, you know, and people were like, no, bro, they're fucking. You know, they're groove, man. Yeah, Still bro. to this day. To, to this, this day. day. Yeah, it's fucking. <laughs> it's good shit. Good shit. I had this. I had this also. Of course. Oh, yeah. you know what? That's I remember touring with Jonathan, and uh, when I was with the Corn Guys for a while, and every time he would see it on vinyl, he would buy it. Really? Yeah, he it's was a great like, record. It's a though. great record, yeah. though. Dude, you remember that? I, I was just telling some of the story. Remember when we did that Metallica tour? The Summer Sanitarium. Summer Sanitarium. Yeah. Remember when we flew to whatever the first date was? My records came out of the. I remember. Remember? Whoa. And then my whole, because I used to it have It came to piece by piece. It was like all on the conveyor belt. Whoa. And you were the, and when I, I know, and I was in shock when I first seen I it. Can't. You were the first one that was like, yo! <laughs> and you rushed and helped me oh, to man, like, get my records. That's my bro, dude. <laughs> of course. Was, that's I when I knew, a, I was like, oh I shit, this tour is a, like me. Yeah, I was like, I, this crazy. I would have expected someone to run for me if that oh, was Oh man, I was just like, that's when I knew this tour is about to be fucking. That was a good one. Some shit. That dude's a legend. Absolutely, and this That's this record is actually has some, the good drums in the beginning. Yeah, mm -hmm. bro. Boom, boom, chip, a lot boom, of boom, this boom, shit, boom. the yeah. raw, the the, um, the raw something. What is it? The uh, Indiana Stooges ones. Those are raw power. That raw shit's power is sick. Yeah, and then he's also got the nightclubbing. Yeah. All the shit that Bowie produced, like this record, and then uh, uh, Bowie shit was amazing. Nightclubbing, which, which is the original, the drums for Closer, Nine Inch Nails, which is that, that beat you just. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Isn't that beat on that record? Kind of like different. Yeah, well, he, he, yeah, he, he, he took the kicks, the kick and the snare. It's, it's, it's kind of, no, not that one. The, um, oh, you're talking about March of the Pigs? Yes, yeah. kind of has the vibe of like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Same, I, I just thought yeah. of it right yeah. now. I never thought of it. Yeah. Right. Ooh, Ooh, shit, we second. might have to look something up. That might be a crazy mix one. Two, 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 two. Ooh, Black Flag. Yeah, that's one. We, uh, we used to, we, I, wasn't a big fan because I just it was never like brought to me. But I found out that where I lived, I lived on Kingsley, the Long Prairie and Fountain. That was where I lived, North okay. Kingsley yeah, in yeah. Hollywood. Right. And there was a club called uh, Natural Fudge that I can hear and see crowds outside from my window. And I was like, it's always like, what's going? On? I could hear, huh? and it was them, bro. It was like the club that they started at them and the Dude, Misfits. Shit. Yeah, they were like Misfits would play there and shit. And I didn't know that's who I was witnessing from afar. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, so I feel something with these guys too. And then we also played our third ever show was at the Anti Club, and that's where these guys started. No way. In Hollywood. So yeah. Man, that's history. That's some yeah. historic shit. Crystal Method. Yeah, I dug them. I wasn't crazy about them, but I love that. That's what brought acid vibe to me. You know, yes. that whole, that shit. What do you call that sound? It was kind of on the tail end of what Big Beat was, right? Yeah. Like, which is like Chemical Brothers. Exactly. And yeah. Like I, I know. Is that big, yeah. Is that Big Beat? That, I think that's yeah. what it was. It was like, yeah, it was, or. But I, I hear it in there now. No, I can. I also just, I was thinking Acid House or something. Oh, yeah. Like they did breaks, have. Acid Breaks. Acid Breaks. Yeah. Right. So they did have like a lot of like funky breaks and then like did. a lot of the. Yeah. Yeah. That shit is the, that got me into that. So where the dollar bin here? Yeah, the dollar yeah. bin. So this is where I would come sometimes if I didn't have much to spend, but I wanted to like spend on records. I couldn't buy a 12 inch for five, you know, or a record for 10 or 15. So I'd want to come here and I'd be like, all right, I got 20 bucks. So that means I'm at the dollar bin. That means I can get 20 records. Oh yeah. Theoretically, right? Yeah, like, 20 you know, records you... that had maybe even if it had one little part that's Maybe. a little part you can use right and then you know you know and i would just look and just try to find like oh yeah like that would be for sure like ray parker jr radio hmm. but this also right here that would be number one that's what we were talking yeah, about. yeah we so like i always used to love looking for uh spoken dialogue like that's that should be a buy right yeah now. i'm actually yeah. gonna buy that yeah that's, that's a real buy. No, Old habits joke. die hard. I don't, I don't want to see. I don't want to get anything right now because I'm gonna go crazy and I don't know where to put it. I have a couple things I got. Around. But it's that. It's like so cool. I, and I, I used to Oak. love trying to find spoken dialogue or anything that had like counting or like like there's like that just automatically looks like 
That's amazing. Like, I'm gonna find something on here. For sure you will. Hmm. Oh, for sure, Ro Robert Goulet. I mean, that's why I come here. <laughs> like, you know man, it's Robert Goulet though. <laughs> I mean, that's Robert. the dude, bro. Dude, he's the dude, yeah. Goulet. Look, he's got a drink in his hand. Oh, and it's in the on the cover, bro. Just like, he has the Diablo Martini. He's like, hey, girl. It's a devil of a good time, right? Is, <laughs> who, who's seen the run? <laughs> Will Ferrell doing this cat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when like, he goes on Conan and he pretends like Conan's Johnny Carson. <laughs> And then also what you did, do with the place. And he does the rap song. Remember he did the Biggie oh, he did the Biggie he did coach. The Biggie and then he did the whole Jay-Z thing with Jay-Z in the back. And he always was saying he was dropping the end bomb on everybody. Oh like, yeah, that's yeah, crazy, yeah, 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 man. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Robert Goulet. Robert Goulet. 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 Yeah. Peter Wolf. Jay Giles band singer. I didn't know that. Yeah, that yeah. was he did Well, I know the name, frame. I just didn't. Yeah. He did Freeze Frame and That's a cover I would not choose to drop. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the... But know. that's a cool moment. No, that is kind of rad. It's very kind of... Another thing that I like to do, I don't know if you're also... It's like, if I felt like finding bands, for example. Finding cool bands to listen to. Yeah. Um, if the cover was badass, I would feel like maybe the music might be badass, so I would buy it anyways. And yes, then like, 100%. You know? That was another thing that it would also be like, I would see a cover, and I didn't know who the bands were, and I'd turn it around and go... Like, all right, who are the players on it, you know? And I would just, okay, well, I don't know. This looks like, I'm gonna like it. Yeah. So I grab it. Like you said, is it calling for you? And it would call for you to buy little things like that, you know? Absolutely, that's one of the best that's things. That's amazing, bro. Yeah, that's, a, that's the power of just like, trying to, like Rick James, like look at this, Rick James. It's probably 88, maybe 89, let's see. The titles. Bro. 88, I was right. That was good, bro. How'd you pull that one out? That was so perfect. Well, I see this right here, see, and it was Called also, it this is all kind of like music nerdship. When Rick James got signed to Warner Brothers, this was the logo that he used to. Oh, wow. Knowledge being dropped by C. And, I didn't know that. Uh, and so, yeah, this, so that's when cool. I see this, I think Warner Brothers. Okay, so you knew it was that era. Yeah, so that's, I was like, oh awesome. shit, this has to be like 88, and bam, Fuck right yeah. there. If you could find a demonstration aka promo that was definitely more of a the title bro pity the rich bro that's a sick ass this must be some crazy shit in here oh, absolutely right yeah, so, absolutely. i don't know pierce arrow let's see let's, pierce arrow. let's see what the and see the white label which meant promo mm. yeah that's right instead so, of red yeah because columbia normally had a red label but if you find the white the demonstration not for sale. This was used for like radio stations or, you know, people of importance. Hey, I gotta get you this new record. Pity the rich. Audrophonic sound. Weird. JDC mixer records. I remember those. I miss doing this. See, I'm so happy you invited me, man. Dude, thank you. I for really being... miss doing this. You're like bringing something back in me. Yeah. Appreciate it, Let's man. do it, brother. Oh yeah. I'm. I do that. Being around here and you know the smell. I enjoy the, the smell, smell, man. It's like, yeah. it's, it just, it's home, right? Like, yeah. there's just like, when I'm, it's really that, it's really that quote from Almost Famous where she's telling the kid, you know, if you ever get lonely, go to the record store to hang out with all your friends. There you go. And this is it. That's what we're doing right now. Just reconnecting and just. When did you buy your first record? How old were you? Ooh, my first record probably, I think was, I think it was like in 81, 80, I know it was like first or second grade when I was able to start requesting gotcha. the radio. But I, my first record that I paid for with my own money was Yaz, Don't Go. Ooh, that's good. What in overseas, Yazoo. Yeah. And after that, like, um, I was able to buy the Police Synchronicity. That was a good one, yeah. Great one. Amazing. Um, that's just like endless hits. And then 1984 Van Halen. Uh, and then, yeah, I was allowed to buy Creatures of the Night. Hell yeah. That was in 82 or 83. Uh, ACDC, I had, I had a few there. Oh, yeah. And my mom, mom wouldn't let me buy it. She okay, was like, because the, the, the album cover. I the know. album cover was... Let me tell you. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I know. Okay. Quick one. So she would go to this place called Zodi's. Zodi's? Yeah, right on Sunset, right? 
So that, that record, yeah, that, I, I told her, I, need, I want an ACDC record, please give me ACDC. And she's like, no, the covers are terrible. And she came back with Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. It's like, because they had a, like a clean cover. Yeah. But their songs like Big Balls on yeah. there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a kid listening to Big Balls. And like, mom, yeah. what are you listening to? The record you bought me. Was, so anyway. Yeah, that, you brought this one. Yeah. We have the same oh. thing. She wouldn't have, she wasn't cool with it because all no. the covers. The If You Want Blood, You've Got It. You know, yeah, with the devil. With the yeah, yeah, come yeah, on now. man, my yeah. mom. You know, she was cool with Kiss. Like, she understood that it was Kiss. It was just like, it was theatrics. You know, mm -hmm. it was just like, it was... But this looked real at yeah, the time. Yeah, man. Folks. They thought Highway to Hell, that shit's real. And, uh, yeah. And that, so, I relate so... Fucking, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> give me one of these, bro. <laughs> Pleasure again, man. Absolutely, thanks brother. Thanks for having me, man. No, man, thanks for being a part of this. This is great. I know you got 22 Red. Kind of growing... You know, doing what I do, bro. I love it. I love yeah. being creative through things, and I yeah. kind of like the brand and market, and it comes naturally out of me much. I love the product, so it's a good way to, you know, and, and I, you know, our stuff has is just quality, you know, and you yes. know that. Hell yeah. And you know? musically, what you got down the pipeline? I got this new project I'm working on called North Kingsley. Okay. Which is the street I grew up on in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, it's, a, it's a new sound. I can't wait for you guys to all hear it, man. Yeah. Thank you again, man. Thanks for having me, brother. Hell yeah.